Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Sold Sign Podcast with your hosts, Justin Sonier and my colleague, Sheila Kirkpatrick. And today we've got a little juicy topic for you. We are going to talk about legal nightmares within the real estate industry. Fun. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> so legal legal blenders uh, can really come in a lot of different forms. Thankfully, we don't have a lot of those situations that do come up. But mm -hmm. at the same time, when they do, we do feel it's important to discuss that with the public. And a lot of times it can come down to disclosure and deposits, I find. Especially with the disclosures, it really comes down to a patent defect versus a latent defect yep. and what is disclosed. Mm -hmm. So we'll just give you a quick rundown on what a patent defect is and what a latent defect is and how that can affect the transaction mm -hmm. as well as get you in a little bit of some legal trouble. <laughs> yeah. So a patent defect yep. is something that is visible. So for example, if you walk into a room and you discover mold on the wall it is visible that is a patent defect yes. so somebody doesn't need to immediately disclose it because you can kind of see it for yourself yeah anything that you can see um with your own eyes or conducting a reasonable home inspection that would be a patent defect yep. now a latent defect on the other hand are the things that maybe a buyer will never see but a vendor experiences so faulty electrical, faulty plumbing, getting water in the basement, uh, those leaks, things like that. Uh, if they are aware of them, they need to disclose them. And if they don't disclose them, then they uh, take risk of uh, legal responsibility. Yeah. And I think that is a valid point as well is sometimes with the latent defects, yeah. the vendors don't always know. And that's where a home inspection or something could do a little more due diligence for you to uncover if yeah. there are any issues. Yeah. So um, one of the situations that I've run into, uh, this was a few years back. My client, if you're watching this, you're going to know it's you just by a couple of things I say. Um, not We're not going to disclose any names um, or property uh, specific details. But in this particular case, I had the buying client and the disclosure was given to us. And on the disclosure, the words were a trickle of water has come into the basement. Trickle. That was the key word. And I found that a very interesting word. So, of course, the first thing I want to know is what is a trickle? Is it something that you would wipe with a cloth? Is it something that you would fill a bucket with? Is it something that would flood your basement? Terms can be used, can be very relative. Yeah, they can be used very loosely. Yes, yeah. exactly. So the response that we had in that particular scenario was that it would fill a cup of water. So I'm like, okay, I will let the buyer know because again, this is part of the decision making process when purchasing a home. You are going to find things that you might not like, but the question is, is it fixable? Is it something that you would want to proceed on the sale with? And in this particular case, the client was satisfied that a cup of water was not something that was going to keep them from buying that particular house. Now, fast forward to the next heavy storm that we had. And I can remember uh, clearly getting a call on Saturday night in a heavy rainstorm. And it was, Sheila, do you have a shop back? Which I did have. But my question is, why? <laughs> because it's Saturday night, it's 10 o'clock at night, and you're asking me for a shop back. So then the client continues to go on to say that uh, the basement is flooded. And it is the first heavy rainfall. Now, of course, I go into realtor mode very quickly. I am like, okay, how much water do you have? Where is it coming in? What are the specifics? I need you to document every single thing that you're seeing because we don't know where this is going to go next. We were disclosed that there was a trickle of water, um, but this is much more severe than, than a, trickle. a trickle of water. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so that is exactly what happened. We, uh, she took care of the water right away, documented everything. And then it was investigation time because we need to be able to prove that 
there were issues that the vendor knew about. Mm -hmm. So we went into investigation mode. And again, your best source investigating is the neighbors. Always the neighbors. (laughs) So in this particular case, the next door neighbor was able to tell us that there had been companies in there on numerous times that the basement has flooded before. Which was very different than the disclosure information received. Um, Then we were able to get professionals in to give their professional advice, write letters to what they could see and what they felt were the issues and to go as far as to say that there was no way the vendor didn't know this information. So we were able to take that information. The client took the vendor to small claims court. Rightfully so. Yeah. They were able to prove that they were aware and they were awarded well, I shouldn't say awarded because small claims court back then um, was around $7,000. But between small claims court and insurance policies, we were looking at over $40,000 in damages. The good thing was, is number one, that the vendor was held liable because we were able to prove that. Number two, the buyer was able to get a brand new um, basement completed And we were able to increase the value of the property. So then when I went to sell that property, we were able to get that much more in a very short period of time. We were able to get everything fixed properly and move on from the situation in a much better financial position than we were when she purchased. Well, that's a nice silver lining considering a what could have been a disastrous story. Absolutely. But I think the most important thing when it comes to um, this scenario, if you're a seller, make sure you disclose. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. if you're a buyer, make sure you ask questions just because someone doesn't fill out a disclosure statement. And I think this is a really important thing for the public to know because I've run into real estate agents that don't know this. When someone decides that they don't want to fill out a disclosure, it doesn't mean that they are not liable to disclose latent defects. So whether there's a disclosure or not, and you suspect something, you still ask, okay. And you might have to, as a real estate agent, point that out to the other agent, Mm -hmm. but okay. I understand there's not a disclosure, but has there been water issues? Has there been, has there been, if the vendor knows they need to disclose? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. No, very valid. So a story on my end, Mm -hmm. I had a listing out on East Scotch Settlement Road, a little specific there. (laughs) (laughs) So near Sussex, and it was a beautiful property. This would have been the beginning of my real estate career. So COVID times about four years ago. And we had this lovely property in the country, little single family home, double car garage, beautiful landscaping, gardens, like somebody who wants country lifestyle, this was it for them. We were getting a lot of action. We immediately had this agent that their client wanted to write an offer. Okay. Because they knew the home was getting so much traction and things were going to be moving quickly. Yeah. They wanted to make their offer favorable for the vendor. Which we saw and sometimes still do see, depending on the property, a lot. So this particular buyer did not have an inspection. Okay. They chose to waive that from the contract. They wanted the home. They knew what they had to do to get it done and chose to do that. Yep. And then it was, we had closing, I'm going to say a month later. And it was probably three days after the closing, I got a text message from the other agent stating that they hired a company to come out, service the septic tank okay, for its cleaning. Yep. And the company that came out to service it stated that the septic was not properly installed. Did they give any information on that? Like what, what was it that made them say it wasn't installed properly? Or was that all the information you were given? There was no specific. So when we went back looking for a little more information, yeah. they were trying to talk to us about the way that it was, I'm going to, I'm going to use the word plumbed. So okay. essentially how it was hooked the up. Connections. Yep. Set up and how it was supposed to be kind of connecting to the septic itself and the, okay. and the type of tank it was. Okay. So my clients were not aware of anything. Yeah. They had a company when they initially, they lived in that property for like 20 years. Right. So they had a company at the beginning come out, service it, 
nobody ever talked to them about any issues. So to them, they just carried on. And when it comes to septics, if you don't ever have an issue, then you actually know nothing about that stuff. Right. Because you're not just going to dig it up and investigate for fun when everything looks normal and a company is able to come in, suck it up and carry on. Yeah. So basically we were trying to get more information. We were going back to the vendors, trying to get more clarity. Was there something maybe previously that had taken place and maybe you forgot to mention it, but there was nothing. They said, no, to our knowledge, everything was fine. We've had it serviced multiple times while we lived here. Nobody has told us otherwise. Right. We have nothing more to add to this. Yeah. So I went back to the other agent basically said exactly what my client said to me. They're not aware of anything. They've lived in this home for 20 years. No issues. Okay. So this agent came back and said that his client was going to pursue legal action. So we're like, okay. Did they ever reach out and ask you for a solution? Like they said, they're going to seek legal action, but did they ever come back and ask your clients to do anything or did they just leave it at just throw it out at you that way. So they were trying to work through some details and get my client to cover some costs, but because they weren't aware of anything and there was no documentation specifically saying what was the issue. issue. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of becoming a, he said, she said moment when they previously lived there for, like I said, 20 years and had no no issues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they were remaining very strong. Yeah. Not doing anything. We're not aware of anything. If you want to pursue legal action, by all means, give us the notice and we will do what we've got to do. Right. And ironically, a few days later, the agent contacted us to say nothing is going any further. The client is just going to, the buyer is not pursuing any legal action and Mm -hmm. they're just going to take it on on their own. Well, I think that's one of the things that's really important when it comes to situations like this is that people have to make decisions. They have to decide um, because in order to have someone liable, you have to be able to prove that they were knowledgeable. That's just it. Right. Right? So the buyer in this situation looked at the total picture, probably seek some legal advice Mm -hmm. and said... I'm never going to be able to prove this because it's a septic. And unless you're digging it up, as you said earlier, how would you ever be aware of that? Yeah. And they even had a little piece of paper stating their last pump date, which was literally a year previous Previous. to the purchase. (laughs) So it's like, okay, well, would nobody have notified us? before right so it did seem a little which you know what that's the other thing that's really interesting because your vendors are able to say okay i had i had it serviced at this time i had it serviced at this time and i had it serviced at this time so none of these things that you're talking about align with what we've ever been told so again doesn't make sense right i mean for all i know maybe they dug it up and didn't like the size didn't like you know like okay well or dug it up and And something else happened at that time because a lot of people don't like to dig them up Mm -hmm. either. Right. So there's, there's definitely lots of things when it comes to the real estate transaction, um, where people are able to, they know if they're getting water in their basement, like if there's any substantial amount of water, they know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but something like that is very, very different Mm -hmm. than, Mm -hmm those other types of things. Yeah. So again, I'm fortunate any way you look at it, but this is the industry and things do happen. Things come up. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes we're dealt with situations that we wish we weren't put in, but we've got to put on our realtor hat and help our clients and deal with the issue. Well, it's funny because I received a message in this past week And it was from a past client of mine. They live in Fredericton now. They're selling their house. They're moving to Nova Scotia. And they had asked me if I had had a septic system uh, inspected before. And we don't actually see that very much in our industry. No, you don't. Um, I have had it once in my career. And typically what they're doing is they're testing flow. The waste coming out too quickly or not quickly enough. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much the extent of those testing. And we rarely see those. Yeah. So it's, 
it's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, our, this industry. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another episode of Behind the Sold Sign with your hosts, Justin Sonier and Sheila Kirkpatrick. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and reach out yeah. if you have anything that you want to talk to us about. And uh, when in doubt, disclose, disclose, disclose. Good point. Yeah. <laughs>